So hey. welcome to Doombrook, everyone. This is Tuesday at 10. I'm so excited to have Leslie Pleasak with us today, a life coach with who's going to provide us with some parenting and self-care mm -hmm. tips and all kinds of stuff. Um, Leslie has wonderful, wonderful experience and um, as a life coach, and we feel very blessed to have you today, Leslie. So thank you for being here. Um, but to start out, of course, Doombrook uh, is 32 years old. We do child abuse prevention and intervention. Our intervention piece is the foundation of why Doombrook started, our Child Advocacy Center, where we interview children with suspected cases of abuse. And we're able to continue to do that in COVID under very safe um, distancing, social distancing practices. And our prevention piece are healthy families where we go into the homes and teach expectant and new parents how to parent and how to manage their families, which of course is so complicated, particularly in this world of COVID. Um, we also give free for an assessment if anyone is expectant or a new parent, uh, free pack and plays just for the assessment. And there is no, you don't have to join us, but it um, encourages new moms to say, hey, it might be good to hear a little bit about how to be a good parent. And our public ed piece, which of course, Leslie knows our Sarah Hoyt, who's a rock star, who goes into the schools in many counties surrounding LaPorte County and LaPorte County to teach children, empower them to take care of themselves. So we are so blessed and so fortunate to be able to continue our services. And we do Tuesday at 10 and host uh, people like Leslie to give our audience and our parents and our children um, ideas on how to take care of themselves, particularly in COVID. So Leslie, welcome. Thank what you. Is, Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. So why don't you start off a little bit by telling us about yourself and, and your work? Okay, so um, I just want to thank you again for asking me to be here and thank Lisa uh, for also inviting me. Um, I am a master certified life coach and I own Leslie Plezak Life Coaching. Um, I'm also the curator of an event that I started in 2018 called Courage Summit. And that is an opportunity for people to share their stories of courage and resilience. And obviously in this last year, as things are changing so fast, um, we weren't able to hold Courage Summit in 2020, but we'll be back in 2021 with that. And that's been, it's kind of like a TED style event where people share in about 20 minutes um, a circumstance in their life that has changed them. And I know that with the work that you do at Dunebrook, uh, that's, you know, um, helping people kind of navigate through what life has to offer is super important. So I do that. And then I also um, am the executive director of the Sinai Forum speaker series at Purdue Northwest, which uh, that I always say that's my day job. And then coaching is my, my side gig. Um, but I think my greatest accomplishment and the reason I'm super excited to be with you here today is that I'm a mom of two. Uh, two daughters. They are grown, and I have a new son-in-law. Um, I'm an I'm an active community member, and it's so important to me to participate in helping bring all of us along to a better place. So, in a nutshell, that's kind of who I am. Wow, that's wonderful, Leslie. Yeah. And especially in this past year, with everything going on. How nice it is for our audience to know uh, that there are people like yourself where they can get support because let's face it, it is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is for everyone. And, and I think it, for me, it's gone in waves, you know, some days I think I've got it. And the next day I'm like, what, you know, and we, none of us have been without um, being affected, right? Like we've all been affected in some way and, and I think it's been an opportunity, but it's also been a challenge. And for parents, especially, I have to say, my girls are out of both, um, you know, public school and out of college. But I have often thought how challenging it must be for parents who are, um, you know, parenting through this pandemic and, and doing homeschooling and, you know, maintaining their jobs and everything else, uh, the responsibility of that. Right. Balancing it all is yes. really, really tough. Yeah. Now, if someone wanted to contact you either about life coaching or the Sinai Forum, mm -hmm. what what might they do? Leslie? Well, so just to be clear, you know, what I do at Purdue is very separate than what I do with my sure. coaching. 
this. So the sign I forum, you can visit Purdue Northwest website and learn more about it. Um, my coaching practice, I do have a website. It's leslieplezak.com. And, um, you know, it's interesting when I think about my coaching practice, it's been an evolution. You know, I, I've had people say, how did you become a life coach? And it's kind of twofold. Um, it happened uh, probably about 15 years ago when I was facing a pretty big transition in my life. Um, I had made a decision to leave a marriage of 20 years and I looked for resources and there really weren't resources available for people that were navigating life's changes um, in a fairly healthy way, but just were looking for support. Mm -hmm. And um, I found a book by chance. I always say I have a book angel, like I find the perfect book at the perfect time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's been sitting on my shelf for 10 years and I read it and I'm like, wow, how did I not read that before? But um, I found a book by Martha Beck, who is a Harvard trained sociologist, and she's probably one of the original life coaches. Mm -hmm. She writes a column in O Magazine, and she has for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And I decided to go through her training. And um, life coaching, you know, the way people can think about it, I, I often say it's similar to hiring a personal trainer um, if you want to work out harder, which is something, you know. I never push myself very hard. And actually, frankly, I don't know that I push myself hard with a personal trainer either. That's just me. But coaching kind of takes us to a place where it's it challenges us to think about the way that we think. And having a life coach is a person who creates accountability, um, who really helps you question what you probably already know. So when a, a client comes to me and says, what should I do? My answer is always the same, which is, I have no idea what you should do. Where they are, ask them the right questions, and then they can find their way to an answer. So um, finding me is as simple as either reaching out through, a, through Facebook or my website. Um, and I always do a 30 minute, a free 30 minute consult with people just to see if it's a right fit for them uh -huh. and a right fit for me. So good. Well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Yeah. And I, again, I think the idea of reaching out and just talking to you and finding out if life coaching is appropriate is the key for people and sure. nothing wrong with reaching out and nothing mm -hmm. wrong with saying we're struggling with one thing or another. Completely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. But that's hard. That's hard. It, it is, is hard. hard. It is very hard for people. And I, you know, I do think that, um, with practice though, it becomes easier. You know, it's maybe the hardest the first time, mm -hmm. but if we do it, we become better at it. So at least that's been my experience. Yeah. That's great, Leslie. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you mm -hmm. for offering your services because I think a lot of people could probably benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Also defining health, uh, mm -hmm. especially for young parents. Can you give us, you know, given your experience, what, what does that mean? And for parents who are listening, you know, parenting is such a multi-diverse, complicated issue that we never thought, you know, we always thought, oh, great to be a parent, but whoa, mm -hmm. when it happens, it's complicated. So how would you define health for young parents? Yeah, I've been thinking about that since I, um, when I knew that I was going to be joining you today. And to me, health is really taking a very holistic approach at looking at a person. So it's about wholeness. And if you think about the word, um, you know, we often think health is the absence of disease and we think about diet and we think about exercise. But um, I think if you think about the word disease and you break it in half and you say dis-ease, being ill at ease, you know, with ourselves, mm -hmm. um, I think to me often that is the way in coaching that I look at wellness or health. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people say it's mind, body, and soul, or people break it down into um, physicality, like physical, emotional, social, spiritual, and intellectual. Mm -hmm. And to me, I think it is really looking at each individual person and what makes them up. And when we talk about physicality, it's not just what you eat, it's what you consume, what do you watch, what do you read? Where do you get your information? You know, so it's 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 more than just those simple terms. Emotionally, it's um, you know what type of support system do you have? 
Mm -hmm. socially, I think community is so incredibly important to health. Mm -hmm. Um, It's kind of what you're talking about is do you have people in your life who fill you up, who help you get through tough times? So socially, it's important. And then of course, spirituality and whatever way you practice that, you know, whether it's through church or nature or meditation, there's so many ways. And then intellectually, what do you do to bring meaning and um, challenge and that sort of thing into your life? So to me, one of the very first things I do as a coach when I meet with people is we talk about, you know, what are the things in your life that are working and what in the, what are the things in your life that sort of are um, calling for your attention? Mm-hmm. And, you know, we sort of start there. Um, but to me, it's very holistic. It's looking at a whole person. Wow. That is so interesting, Leslie. So, so of all those areas you've just described, if one is a little bit out of balance, that's a problem and can negatively affect the others. And only by talking to you or someone else sometimes can you help a client see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also think a lot of it is making people realize that, um, you know, sometimes I'll have people say, I feel like I'm not doing enough or, you know, they're not pushing hard enough. And when we really start to unpack that, they realize that they're doing a whole lot more than they realize, you know, because the way they define accomplishment or achievement is external. You know, what am I putting out in the world? But I, especially through this pandemic, I think, you know, some days, um, it's, it's a matter of just keeping things going. Right. right. You know, yeah. I mean, in the beginning, you know, we, people talked about, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Yeah. And then there are days when it's like, I think I'm just going to get dressed, yeah, right. you know? So, exactly. um, it, it's, it's often to me, one huge part of health is kindness, you know, kindness to self and kindness yeah. to others too. Wow. Yeah. Gosh, that's great. That is such great advice. Uh, and would you have tips for young parents? You know, it's interesting because uh, Lisa posed that question to me to think about. And, you know, my girls are 28 and 25 and they are pretty Mm -hmm. self-sufficient. But as I was thinking about it, my advice for young parents is um, it is not selfish to care for yourself. You know, I know it's hard to carve out time when there's so much going on. I think back to when my girls were small um, and, um, it was challenging to find the space and the time. And I often felt guilty if I did do that, Mm -hmm. but I think it's so important. In fact, I think it's necessary for health that we find a way, whether it's, you know, maybe you have a a friend or a a parent that you know that can take your kids for a little time and then vice versa, you can pay back, you know, and and take theirs. Um, But I really think self-care and it doesn't have to be, you know, I mean, people often think that means like a massage or I I think it really just is what do you need to be in a place of um, peace and happiness? So with my clients sometimes, and I think this originated with Susan Hyatt, who's a coach that I know, but she has what she calls a happy basket. Uh And the happy basket is just a place where you note things that make you happy. So for me, Um, Like I love kid voices, you know, so like noticing little kid voices or, you know, that, that feeling of first sip of coffee or tea in the morning where you're just like, you know, kind of that, so they can be small things, but it's really teaching and um, reminding people to notice what are the things that bring you joy? You know, what are the things that make you happy? So that would be one. And then I think the second thing I was thinking about with parenting Uh is really, maintaining your individuality. Um, For parents, I think we get consumed sometimes by being a parent and we lose track of what we enjoy. Yeah. And I coach a lot of women who are um, probably on the other side of parenting. They're moving towards empty nesting and they've given so much of themselves away to their family and their um, community and their kids school and, you know, just maintaining, um, getting by that when their kids are grown and they do grow up and go away, they are like, I don't even know what I like. I don't know who I am. And I have to say when my youngest Natalie left for college, she always jokingly says I cried randomly for six months and I kind of (laughs) did, but, but it was more about like, what do I do next? You know? And I'm so grateful 
that I had interests that I maintained and I nurtured throughout the time that I was a mom, parenting them at home Mm -hmm. so that I could transition into some meaningful things um, when they got older. So I would say those are the two bits of advice that I would give to young parents. Those are wonderful pieces of advice. I think we, I had a client recently where the idea of self-care, she said, well, that takes a lot of time. (laughs) Number one, it really doesn't. Number two, when we take self-care, I think is what you're saying is then we're stronger and we're happier. Uh, And what I mean by self-care in a lot of ways is, um, So imagine you're driving your kids um, wherever you're going, you know, (laughs) during the day. If you can just consciously be aware of how you feel in your body and take some deep breaths and center yourself um, versus kind of getting caught up in what's happening around you, that's self-care, you know? So I really want to stress one of the beauties of coaching is that each one of us needs different things to feel balanced and at ease in our lives. And a lot of us don't even know what that is. So that's kind of one of the things I focus on with my clients is what do you need in your life to feel um, grounded? And it looks different for each of us. And it it doesn't have to take a lot of time and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Um, And there are lots and lots of ideas, you know, that that can help us. Yeah. That's great. And maybe that it's so interesting. It doesn't have to be a trip somewhere or a massage or Mm -hmm. something that takes time and money, but just identifying what brings you joy, I think is what you said. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. So true. Great, great Mm -hmm. tips, self-care and not losing, maintaining your individuality, which, um, right. Like we're way more than just parents, right? I mean, we are more than mom. Right. But for some years where, while they're growing up, we do, we have the capacity to lose ourselves in our role. And I also think that it teaches our kids that it's okay to be something more than mom, caregiver, cook, you know, um, you know, transportation. I think my girls, um, when I went back to work, Natalie was in fourth grade and Madeline was in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And it really changed the dynamic of how they perceived me, you know? So, um, so I think that, you know, it, there's a lot that we can model mm-hmm. uh, for our kids that show um, not self-centeredness, right. but self-focused to the point that we show up better for our kids when we do that. Wow. That is, yeah. Yeah. It's not self-centeredness. It's taking care of yourself. And yeah. All yeah. My, very, very different. Two very yeah. different things. Yeah. But sometimes we get confused about that. Or have mm-hmm. irrational belief system about it. Well, I just think sometimes, you know, as parents, we think, how can I ever do that? I've got so much on my plate. I just don't know how I'm going to do that. Right. And, um, you know, that is where um, that's a belief system. The idea that I, I can't possibly find another minute yeah. is something that you can kind of challenge yourself on. And there are some truths to it. But there are also some other ways. I always say there are, there are other ways of looking at something. So it's never about trying to pretend something isn't what is happening, but it's how can we shift the perspective so that we can see it a little bit differently? Yeah. That's really what coaching is about. Right. Changing our view of how we see something in order to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Great. Oh gosh. Great. Lovely. So given that when we're talking about self-care and not losing ourselves, um, especially with your work in the arts, how, why is it emotionally and spiritually important for a parent or any one of us, anyone listening uh, to maybe, you know, be involved in the arts. Yeah, I was thinking about that. And I guess my answer to that is it can be the arts for some people, but I I would rephrase it and say, um, you know, why is it important to do things that bring us peace and closer Uh, to wholeness, right? So for some people, it is the arts and maybe it's the fine arts, it's painting or music or dance or something like that. But for others, it's, um, you know, yoga and meditation, or some people find that sense of belonging and volunteering. To me, it's a matter of finding, you know, when I went through my life coach training, Martha Beck would often talk about hot tracks and hot tracks are like, if you're tracking an animal, you're going to follow, you know, the path. Well, 
with hot tracks, it's like, if something feels interesting to me or to a client, I encourage them to explore it. It doesn't mean you have to do that forever, but if you follow your hot track, Hmm. you're just following your way to the things that matter to you. So it's kind of like, are you getting colder as you move towards something? You know, it's kind of the same type of thing. So when I talk about um, why it's important to um, find things that bring us joy, it's because it makes us more centered. And, and for each of us, it's different. And when we don't know what that is, I think exploration and curiosity are so important. Yeah. So, you know, whether it is, you know, listening to a Sinai Forum speaker and being challenged to think differently or it's trying a new class. I recently went, um, I have a yoga studio that I go to, which is a, has a great sense of community and they did a sound healing workshop. And um, I went to that just to be, just to be curious and learn more about it, you know? So, and there are lots of opportunities. I know in COVID there are less yeah. um, opportunities in person, but there are so many things online that we can explore. Uh -huh. So to me, it's more about, you know, discovering what it is that brings you joy, that brings you a sense of calm, what brings you peace. Hmm. Um, and those things ultimately to me lead to a sense of spirituality and centeredness. Yeah. Wow. So it, for a busy mom, either expecting or a new mom or dad, um, to have the courage and the insight, as you said, to explore and be mm -hmm. curious about kind of trusting your gut, so to speak, respecting <laughs> that little, you know, if it's a walk in the woods or it's a yoga class or to, you know, poke the bear as one of my Southern friends would say, Jean, you got to poke that bear, poke the bear, yeah. go out yeah. and check it out because it can bring you great joy. and calm. Well, and I, I think for new parents too, it's allowing yourself to um, immerse in this new transition in this baby that you have. My niece recently had a baby. And I think back to when I brought Madeline home from the hospital, it, there's so much we don't know, right? I mean, you have this baby and you're like, now what? And I think that, you know, to reach out to other moms, there's so much on the internet um, that allows people to connect with new parents, new mothers, um, to learn from each other. And um, to not be afraid to explore that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. So, and if you don't find it, create it. There, look at you. Look what you did, Leslie. Honestly, that's what you did. And that is so wonderful. You were searching for support and look what you've created. <laughs> Such a wonderful yeah, it's been, yeah, I, I do think we, we teach what we need to learn. And so yeah. I've learned as much from my clients as I hope they've yeah. learned from me. Oh my gosh. Well, Leslie, what a delight. What great um, ideas you brought up on the ability of uh, seeking help as a parent um, in many different ways. And one of those might be life coaching mm -hmm. and to have, you know, do self-care and maintain your individuality. And if you don't know how to do that, to reach out. So thank you for those tips. Is there anything else, um, Leslie, that you'd like uh, to talk about today? Um, actually, you know, it's funny, you, uh, one of the questions you guys asked me was what else would I want to share? And, you know, we've been in a pretty chaotic place in the world. I think we would all agree. And, you know, I've tried to think about how do you frame that? And I think that in chaos, there's also opportunity, mm. um, you know, and so that's one thing to keep in mind. And then the biggest thing I, I it, this comes from Brene Brown, the work of Brene yes, Brown we've love her. with her. Mm -hmm. Brene Brown says that um, true courage is vulnerability. Yeah. And I have to say, I've embraced that. Um, my courage summit that I do annually I say, you know, we think about courage sometimes as being very valiant and fighting for what we believe in, but I really think it's about being real. Yeah. Um, you know, there is no such thing as perfection. And so to be honest with ourselves when we're overwhelmed, to reach out when we need others. And I also think most importantly is to find um, a sense of belonging and whether it's through, you know, parenting groups that are offered through Dunebrook or other places in your community, or by reaching out one-to-one -to, -one to a life coach or a therapist, right. there are resources available. And, um, you know, I just encourage people if they, if they need support to ask for it, and if they can offer support to others to do that as well. Yeah. 
Well, that is great advice, especially in these times. Uh, get, have the courage to ask for yourself, but reach out to others in need. And that can be just a small, hi, how are you kind of thing. Exactly. I yeah. think we definitely need more kindness in the world. Yeah. Wow. Don't you agree? Cheers to that, Leslie. Cheers sure. to that. Well, Leslie, thank you so very much. It's been an absolute, I could talk to you all day long. Oh, uh, it's been a delight. And if anyone is interested in finding out more, they should go to your Leslie Playzac at uh, dot com, mm -hmm. uh, at your website. Yep. If you just search uh, my name, Leslie dot com, you'll find my website and there's an opportunity on the website to reach out to me directly. Mm -hmm. And I would be more than happy to chat with anybody who is looking for support. And I also, one of the things I define myself as is a connector mm -hmm. and I'm happy to, you know, just connect people. If I'm not the right coach or the right resource for someone, I'm happy to share what I know about what others are doing. So wonderful. Well, you yeah. certainly have given us some wonderful advice today, Leslie. Thank you. And we wish you, you all good things in the new year. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here. Okay. Take care. Too. All right. Bye-bye.